I want you to hear one of the sweetest love stories you're ever going to hear, next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us. You've been meeting the Karen and Greg show here for the last couple of times, and honestly, the story that you're about to hear, a love story that is just kind of a, so unique, it's just amazing. And I'm sure you were able to catch little glimpses of, of this as they told their stories the last, uh, I keep saying, couple of weeks. But um, uh, now you're going to get it in full, so I hope you've been able to stay, stay with us and, and hear their story. And it all begins when you're both about 17. 17. Yep. Both in high school. Yep. Yeah. I was a senior, he was a junior. Orem, in Orem, uh, Utah? We went to Tempview. Tempview, Provo. Utah, Provo. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. Provo. Mm-hmm. So what, what was life like at age 17 for the two of you? Well, I was the wild one and she <laughs> was the you're the non-Mormon. The non-Mormon. She was the cheerleader. Um, and the good Mormon girl. Well, we called them Molly Mormons. Okay. That's the nickname for them because she was just the sweetest girl. And, and, and I don't think we appreciated the fact, I didn't until we talked just a f- little bit ago, that this was actual love. I mean, you, you yes. loved each other. Yes. yes. Went on dates. and Oh, yes. Uh, we oh, met, yeah. we, we were in a uh, American Society class, and... Um, in December of 1980, um, those who could afford it, we were going to fly to Denver and like go visit the governor and do the mint. And, yeah. and back in those days, we literally went with one little, what was he, like a student teacher? They'd never let this happen. And so we go oh, over was there. Your yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Was we chaperone. have this one little, this young guy that, you know, we only saw him like the first day. Well, and, and then he's like, free. yeah, it was, it was pretty free. And, uh, and while we were there, um, he had had family in Denver, so he showed me all over. I mean, we took buses, we oh. took taxis. We it was it was so fun. He just showed me this life, you know, and he was just really fun. But you uh, were just in love, and but the problem yeah. was uh, you were free, I guess, or unencumbered. But mm. but dad, oh, I loved no. her. But, but she... Karen's dad was uh, no, he was not excited not about a, me a, dating yeah. a non-Mormon. Yeah. You know, he knew what that meant, he and did. you weren't going to join the church no. at this point. He had been treated really poorly by the Mormons in his neighborhood. He was like, yeah. no. And I mean, I used to say this thing. I used to say, "I wish you could just know what I know." <laughs> and he'd say, "Well, I wish you could know what I know." And <laughs> if you just knew what I knew. And uh, so we tried to make it work for a couple years. Um, and really? yeah, yeah, but then I had met a return missionary, mm-hmm. and uh, and I dated both of them for a while, and and it was. Oh, but Dad was yeah, supportive of the was. return missionary yeah. and, and the I, temple marriage mm-hmm. and. Yes, so. and I remember the day I had to let Greg go. I know where I was. I, I was too. I was at Sundance. It was September of 1982, and I got engaged not much longer there. And and, and you were heartbroken. I was I was devastated. And um, you kind of this what you explained to us these many years of kind of wandering and turmoil. This was part of it, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was another um, slap in the face from. From the LDS faith, you know, it was. Um, I guess so. I wasn't good enough. You know. Oh mm-hmm. gosh. He called me two weeks before I got married, and we talked. And he thought, he thought he had expressed his undying love for me. Man, I don't know where I was. He just asked me, "Do you really want to do this? Do you really want to do this?" And I was like, "You mean get married? Yeah, not, not to yeah, him. yeah, get married." And it was like. Yes, I do. And he, he thought that was his expression of how much he loved me. I didn't get that. I, from my mind, he had made a comment in high school about marriage is just a piece of paper. You know, so I thought he was actually saying, you know, you don't really want to be married. It's, you know, it's not important to be married. So I didn't take it that as this undying love. And uh, what I, was I didn't know what to saying do. saying was it's more than just a piece of paper. Yeah, and oh. I didn't pick up on that. And... and I, you know, he didn't understand about temple marriage, is that you get married in the temple, and then you're, well, is, and then you have a reception at night. He actually came to my reception, and he didn't get I out didn't of the go car. In, I just went out. I came out, and I remember feeling him there. I actually looked around, and it was like, you know, it was the weirdest, she did it was it. the weirdest <laughs> feeling, and I never saw him again, but he saw me. 
a couple times. Yeah. And I always had a baby. She had babies in her arms, and there was, um, I wasn't so about to interfere. Approach, yeah. you know. I thought, he well, she found me. what she was looking for, yeah. and I wish her the best. And uh, I'll, I'll bite the bullet. And, and little did he her, know how yeah. unhappy never, I was. Yeah. You know, I was. I, never forgot, I was. Never forgotten him. N I didn't, but I was faithful to my marriage, but I was unhappy in my marriage. Okay. You know, uh, my marriage was, I just wasn't a good one, and obviously I had expressed what yeah. happened. And, uh, and so we went 30 years. And in 2011 is when I got brave enough and I filed for divorce. And my divorce was final in March of 2011. Now, interestingly, as we remember from your story, you actually came to Jesus about 2009. Nine. Nine. Right. Mm -hmm. so and he was promised. Go ahead. Well, in 2009, and um, he, he had received all these promises, and the Lord had said to him that if you'll do this program and walk this walk with me, because the Lord was going to walk I'll the walk with, with you, him, right? he said, you'll, you'll receive all the desires of your heart. <laughs> and little did I know in 2009, just what an impact that was going to have on my life, yeah. because I was one of those desires. Sure. And uh, so, 2011, nine, you get yeah, 2011, I, I, I did it, and in that was in March. It was final in March of 2011, and then in July of 2011 was my 30-year high school reunion, and so I went. And, uh, and it was interesting to me that I didn't wear an L on my forehead, that I didn't wear my pain on me, you know. And, uh, and people were like, oh, Karen, you should just, and I had a friend say, you got to open up a Facebook and you've got a date online. So she came over and helped me open up this Facebook and then ran out of my house. And literally, as she's running out of my house, all these names come up. His name was the second on the list. And I was like, no. And I got this tingle up my spine. It was like, Greg Toll has a Facebook, you know. And so I flip over to it to find something terrible had just happened in his life. And I was like, oh, everybody was sending all these condolences. And I'm like, and you know what went, th went through me was, oh, man, I hope his wife didn't die. You know, I was like, no. Yeah. And it turned out that he had had a girlfriend. Can I tell the story a little sure. bit? Sure. Okay. So he had this girlfriend who they were on and off. And they were off. And she shows up at his place and takes his car. Left, all, left her dog and all of her belongings and drove about an hour away to a cliff and set herself on fire oh. and tried to drive off the cliff and got stuck in a rut and she burned to death in the front seat. Oh. And that was only six weeks before oh. I opened up and saw this. So and the so, condolences right. were Right. And, and I didn't know yeah. this at the time. And I so I left him this little... I'm so sorry something terrible has happened to you. I said, you might remember me, you know, and little <laughs> did I know. <laughs> and little did I know. And, uh, um, and so I just, this private message, and then four days later I get a response, and it was like a nothing response. It's just a good thing the Spirit was with me because it just wrote, about, yes, it's me. I lost my girlfriend. How are you? And I was like, Okay, well then maybe he's really not. It was not more there. like, yes, it's me. Yeah, but that's not how I, I read it. You can't say, you can't put any emphasis. No, you should hear under and the circumstances. Like, yeah. You should well, hear my wife okay, leave a message he's, on. Yeah, he's on not the phone. super enthusiastic, but it's like, but something clicked in my head and it said he asked how I was. Yeah. So I wrote this novel back, you know, yeah. and he was so thrilled to hear her. I wasn't married anymore. He was sorry I went through that, but it was like, yeah. yeah. And so we had this back and forth thing, and then we started talking. And where were you both at? I was Physically. in where I am now. When the house we live in right now, I was in Orem. Okay. And uh, and I was in Northern California. At the oh. rehab. At, at, yeah. At, uh, at uh, Albion. Well, California. this is a good right. Facebook story. Well, then, huh? yeah. well, the thing was, is he wrote back this Facebook, and he writes in it. In this, well, actually, this was an email. We had given each other email. Sure. And he's like, I just want you to know that I don't use any drugs or alcohol, which was a clue that I guess you used to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the second one was, and I'm, I'm super spiritual now. And I, I belly laughed at that. Yeah, Greg, tall, spiritual. <laughs> no way. You know, and, uh, and uh, I mean, he, he would, no way. Little did she know. You know. And so then we started talking on the phone, which really was a wonderful thing because I fell in love with him so quickly. And um, oh. Oh, you have just never met a more wonderful human being than Greg. And he would say oh, all these nice. things and he would just talk about God. And he, he had this direct line to God. I and mean, it, was, it was amazing. 
And, and where were you at with the church? I was still point? all in. Got to remember, I wasn't believing in like the priesthood. I'd already had those experiences. And trouble like, with the polygamy the, well, oh, and yeah. some of the other yeah, things. Yeah, and the doctrine but, of God. You know, it's, oh, it turns out that I guess the doctrine of God, the doctrine of man, and the doctrine of salvation. Salvation. I was having I'm trouble. Still riding pretty much on your dad's coattails. Yeah, I, I was. I mean, I had had my own experiences, and I credited them to Mormonism, and not crediting them just to God. I, I, I linked them. To, Oh sure, Mormonism, everything everything you know. we give credit yeah, no, the church but I is had, true. Right. Yeah. You know, it's 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 backwards. You don't look for truth. No, the church is true and then you just make it all fit from there, you know. <laughs> so the and, funny thing was is is we fell in love on the phone. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. She, this is awesome. She uh <laughs> she starts I ask her, Well, do you think there's any chance that we might have any <laughs> have it, you know, a relationship. And she said, oh, no, absolutely not. I'm going to school. My life's too busy. So I prayed about that. And, and, the, and the Lord said, don't let her get away from you again. You know, you already know that I'm here for you. You just follow me. You can go and do what you have to do, but you get the love of your life and you pull her out and don't let her well and he said he said the lord told him to be patient he's like well i have been patient for 30 years i can yeah. hang on a little longer <laughs> i mean he was willing for me to even like well even if you marry somebody else you you know i mean he I he was willing to friend. wait for anything yeah. and uh and so for me what happened was in october i don't know there's something about october's <laughs> october of 2011 i was up in salt lake at the it was the uh, state cross country meet i used to coach track and uh, for 13 years, I, I'm a runner and I just love running. And I was up there with my friends and they were asking me about Greg and I was telling them all this stuff. I said, da, 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 da. it's this and this and this. And I made the comment, you know, even if he had never joined the church, he would have been the most wonderful husband. And I was surprised I said that. Oh, he'd have been the most wonderful father. <laughs> and right then a voice came into my head and said, don't let it get in the way again. It's like, oh, you know, and it was like, I can. So at that point I was all in. So, and I wanted to, and I remember when I told him I loved him. Over the uh, phone. Over yeah. the phone. Yeah, over the phone. Says, well, you hadn't even met or no. had seen each other yet? Or? Uh, we had seen each other once. He yeah, came. Yeah, once. I came to, to visit my brother. In, in August. In okay. August, and we saw each other for one day. We went to a movie and a baseball game. Oh. And then I flew out the next yeah. day. And then and that, my head was just. That was it. That was it. And so he came, and I said, I'm going to get the missionaries. So he came for a month in December of 2011, yeah. and I got the missionaries and took the missionary discussions, and uh, and I'm and sorry, he joined. You took him, or he, he did. did. He took him, okay. and he was baptized in my ward on yeah. Christmas Eve in 2011, and uh, and and then he received the priesthood, and we were engaged. He asked me to marry him, and I was like, only if you'll marry me in the temple. He's like, okay, I'll do whatever I need to do. So he moved here, and so you converted to more. They didn't talk about the doctrine. No, they, they don't. And, they don't discuss doctrine much. But they, families are forever. Yeah, Book of they, Mormon. It's, it's very, very. Boy, it sure sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Well, the eternal thing, and the one thing that I learned. And with they Greg, were nicer to me this time. Yes, they were. Oh, well, because because he was joined. Perspective missionary. Yes. Oh yeah, he had he baptism. had like a following. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Nothing. Oh, save the the alcoholic. You know, here he is a Mormon now. Oh yeah, Greg has quite a following. But then they get to know him, <laughs> and then they're really then then they're hooked. You know, yeah. once you meet Greg, it's kind of hard to not like Greg. And uh, and so um, he did all this for me. And I remember the night before he was, this is funny. So the night before he was baptized, because he was getting baptized on Christmas Eve, I had actually slept at his brother's. And he was upstairs. And I was down, and he came down on the couch, and he was talking to me. And he actually said for the first time, it kind of made me nervous. He said, I used to watch Elizabeth Taylor in these movies because she reminded me, like, I look nothing like Elizabeth Taylor. And he's, like, saying, you are more beautiful than Elizabeth Taylor. And you know what? He actually believes that. The filter that he sees me with is just incredible. I can't... You look through rose-colored glasses. Oh, my but gosh. But I do that for you in, in that way. But I... Oh, my goodness. I've learned to look at human beings in a different way as well. Yeah. That's, he, um, that's a, a, a soft, joy. A sure. softer heart. He, you know? he sees people the way God sees people. So you end up getting married you know? in the American Fork American Temple? American Fork Temple. Yeah. Yeah. So in J January of 2013, we were still in the temple. So we go through the temple. What and did I say? Yeah. We're sitting in the celestial room. And he says, um, who put this ceremony together? And I said, well, Joseph Smith. And he said, because well, it's your first time through. First time through. Now you've been through before. I've been through. And, I said, and what amazing? did you say? And Joseph Smith said, so he was a Mason. Is he a Mason? 
And I said, know. yes. So we sat in the celestial room, and he pointed out all these mason symbols in the celestial room. Like, I'm like, hmm, okay. Yeah. And then a little bit later, after we were married, um, there was, he showed me this picture. And it was, and I said, that is the five points of fellowship. He goes, how do you know what that's called? I said, because we used to do that at the Veil. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the and handshakes we were, yeah. and everything. Huh? Yeah. yeah. And, and Greg kept his peace. He, you know, we when we were teaching gospel principles, we were learning these lessons, and he just struggled with the doctrine. And so I quit teaching him doctrine. As a matter of fact, I even told my class, Greg's not learning doctrine because it gets in the, I, he has this direct current, would, this connection to God, and I don't want to touch that. I felt like Mormonism was getting in the way of his direct line to God, and so we would, dropped the she doctrine. She would teach... Um, the Bible, and about because we decided we're going to we're going to talk about Jesus Christ. His yeah. name is on this church, so they can't stop us from talking about Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> so that she funny? talked about Jesus Christ, and that, and they loved it. And then he would get and up. And then I would bring the last my testimony ten minutes and my experiences mm -hmm. of, and of of where Jesus has affected me in my life, wow. and I have hundreds of those. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, well, now you start studying, though. I did. Mm -hmm. I start and studying. And you went through a lot. Mm -hmm. She's a scholar. And, and I didn't. Really I didn't does. say much to Greg. Um, she didn't want me. She didn't I want didn't to tell know. me what she was doing because no. she was struggling with. Yeah, right. I was like, oh, you know, just the idea that I could believe a lie, you know, and just and have it feel like, you know, that was the spirit. And what uh, else did you study? I know you mentioned the. Um, Oh gosh, I'm sorry. No, you mentioned something that you'd studied. Well, and, when I was in there, or, or I the looked, things with Holland and yes, some of those kinds yes, of things. But had you read stuff that well, you, in LDS.org? Yeah, when I was in LDS.org, I would pull up stuff and I learned that if you went out of things, sometimes you couldn't get back in. And so I learned to leave like ten windows open. So when it came time to actually look at church history, I had read so much of that in there yeah. that I, you know, it was. It was believable to me. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, I've never heard this before, uh, you know. And uh, and the one thing about Greg was, um, it's truth. I learned I learned a lot about love. When when you are loved as purely as he loves me, it changed who I am. I mean, I I uh, that what's his name? Um, L. Frank Baum, the guy that wrote Wizard of Oz. Oh, yeah. You know, and it says in there that a, a heart isn't judged. Um, by how much you love others, by how much others love you. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's true. You start sensing how, what God mm -hmm. is like. Well, how he loved me, it changed who I was because the value that I felt from his love allowed me to love more freely, um, less just baggage, you yeah. know. And uh, I'm a, I have this ability because of the way he loves me. I am more patient with him. I'm more long-suffering with him, and I, I'm more understanding with him, and I didn't feel, didn't know you could feel that way about that's another Christ, human being. I know, and so what it, did you... That's what it is. It's Christ that, that has, we've opened our home to, to Jesus Christ, and the Spirit is in our home. Things are continuously getting better. Um, it's, it's so fun to watch, yeah. because my life, it's always been, okay, ride this rail until the tires burn off it you know and I have a saying of you can't change the past we don't know the future so live in the present yeah. and today is a present and that's why it's a present uh -huh. it's, it's a, a gift. gift yeah and so we should cherish that day and and so and, our our trajectory was so I'm struggling with some things not really telling him and and what I didn't even know that he didn't ever really feel this like he didn't feel the priesthood he he didn't like the temple and yeah, he I said, I don't like how we're apart. So I don't it was an like easy the sell back to yeah, him. He, to, he didn't like that yeah. he knew my name. I didn't know his name. He just thought this inequality. It was like, ah, oh, that seemed was a bit so show awesome. To me. Yeah, he, and he picked and, up right and, on that. And that's why I said, is a, what, is a Mason them? Why are women here? Because Masons don't allow women, to women be in, in there to, to do their ceremonies. Temples. Okay, so uh -huh. that's why I think there's that separation of the men and women. Yeah. Now, where were you at with Jesus in all of this? I mean, did you? when did you kind of sense, okay, this is the more, this is who he is. I mean, we kind of touched on mm -hmm. that in your story. He showed but, me. Part of it was that 
this worthiness issue that I heard you mention. And God came to him on the front end. He didn't say, okay, I'm going to give you some things to work on in a couple weeks, come back and we'll chat and see how you're doing. Yeah. You know, it was. I'm here now. Now. And it's like. You follow me. Worthiness begins and in with God. Yeah. Not with us. You know, and, and that changed this idea of working for it and earning for it. And, you know, this, to have to be worthy, to have the spirit with you. He had the spirit, you know, and he had it from day one. And, and. And that, so that got my idea of changing, too. Yeah. And and then just the fact that, like, he, he says, please don't make me go to priesthood again. Yeah. And he <laughs> says, they talk about the dumbest stuff in there. And he goes, it it's is like, a waste of and my And stuff life. that yeah. they don't really know. Oh. It's I like mean. stuff that our parents used to teach us when we were little. <laughs> you know, it was how to be respectful, how to yeah. be good to your kids, how to be good to your wife. Well, now, there's a couple of things real quick. You, you talk to your children. Did well, you tell them? okay, so um, out of my five kids, I only have one that doesn't know where I'm at. Okay. Um, my oldest son was left the church. My second son left at 18. My, my third son is the one that's married in the temple, has a baby. He doesn't know. My kids tell me he's not all in. I don't know. My fourth son knew the church wasn't true on his mission. So I have three missionaries. You know, yeah, they okay. all went on missions except for Mick. And then my daughter was treated so horribly. When I, when I went through my divorce... Um, the oh, people in my ward treated hard. me, you know, and then they treated her poorly. And I quit making her go. She was treated so poorly. Oh. They treated her poorly, and, and then she marries a convert, and all of a sudden they're wide open. Oh, hey, to him. open arms to, yeah. to me. And so that yeah. was contrast. They saw, well, some hypocrisy was going on there. Yeah. And I am was always raised to, of, of making sure that she's safe. <laughs> You know, that's number one. I have her. She's my present. <laughs> I want to make sure she's safe. And that's yeah. why I said if you're being attacked, uh, you know. You're attacking me. Yeah. You're attacking me. Then yeah. I'm, pr I'm here to protect her. And I yeah. just mm -hmm. take her out of that situation. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that you've been teaching this gospel principles class and the people love Jen. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, we love them, too. Yeah. yeah. And you... Uh, you have a chance, it sounds like, to do some more teaching. Yes. Do you want to talk about yes. that? Yes. Okay. You, you, um, he showed up. He talked to you, honey. One of our neighbors who had actually started the gospel principles. Like 10 years 10 ago. 10 years ago. So. This class. This class. Well, now with the new two-hour break, they've eliminated that, that class. A lot of that. Oh, have they eliminated yeah, gospel it? Gospel Essentials now. is gone. Oh. So he had come to my home, knocked on our home, and said, hey, I've got an idea. We haven't seen you guys forever. You guys were the best. And he's a, he's a retired BYU professor, a very <laughs> intelligent man, and I love him. He's a next-door neighbor. And he said, your guys' teaching was the best we ever saw. And so we're thinking, we're at once a month, we'll just meet at my house, and there's some of the couples that used to come to you know that were involved with the, with your yeah. class we'd love to have you come over and not surrounded by church basis or anything we just want you to come over and and teach us the way the, we bible. Used to the bible and the bible. and it's an open forum now they don't really know where it's going to go our first one's on sunday and so we'll see how it goes i and know I how may, it's going to go because jesus you know is telling me follow my lead again it's gonna so I think there's there's a reason why I was told to go ahead and join that church because. Um, well, now you appreciate certainly what because I love a lot of I mean a ton of those people I really I love them a lot. They're really nice people, and I want to see them to to realize that the penance is paid. Jesus Christ has already done it. They yeah. don't have to work to get there. They're never going to be good enough to get there on their own. And if they believe that that's what they're going to have to do, that's what they're going to be judged on. Yeah. They All they have to do is understand that Jesus Christ did it already. It's finished. It's finished. It's such an amazing, simple gospel when you understand it that way. As a Mormon, it's what hard relief. to... It's, you know, you, you, you don't can. have enough faith as a Mormon. Because your faith... Think about it. So when you're not feeling the Spirit, what are we taught to do as a Mormon? Read your scriptures oh, more, study, study more, and, it, and, and where's more. the focus? 
It's you know, on Pastor Chad what we're said, doing. Right. Yeah. The focus is on you. We'll go to the temple on, more yes, or something. It's yeah. not on Jesus and what I Jesus has done for us. You know? One of the things I didn't understand is it was the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but we never talked about Jesus much. You might hear it in some songs. You know, the end the, of a prayer. And the end and, of a prayer yeah. or at sacrament. 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 But the but rest even, of the time then, we were studying about prophets. Yes. And, prophets, and, du and duties. And duties. Sabbath day, tithing, mm -hmm. yeah. It, the focus is not on Jesus. So I, I told her one time, I says, this this is like a business meeting. Yeah, okay. That's what he said. And they say, first we have business. And then he said, then I would say, this, they treat it like a country club instead yeah. of a hospital. The yeah. church, we need to accept people like a hospital. They're sick in the heart. And we need to bring them in and let them know that Christ has already done the, well, Jesus, the repairing. Of we're not sinners as Jesus, Mormons, are we? No. I mean, we're not perfect, <laughs> no. but we're, we don't. We don't understand us. that term we don't sinner. And, under, under. and you know, Jesus never ever put the institution ever in front of anyone. No, in he, fact, yes. He was, and the the person always was first. And you know, you know, this is a Mormon. When when something happens, you you always say, "Oh, well, that's the the church is true, the people aren't." Yeah. And now I have flopped that. The church is not true. The people are true. We have found that the people are way more truer than the church they believe in. They you want know? to be. And I, yeah. I honestly, one thing I will not do is I will not treat them the way they treated me when I first moved to this state. I will not treat them and, and push them away. I will, I will embrace oh, no. them and try to show them that no matter what, God loves them, and I love them. Well, don't you feel our pride is gone, our judgmental, oh my gosh. and we have yeah. this freedom and yeah. joy, like you were saying, you're, serenity. In, you're in the hand of Jesus, and it's serenity. And but as a Mormon, you can't see that. I mean, you just really I can't. It. I mean, you you know, until you step out, you know, it's well, uh, and we know that a lot of the Mormons that do leave don't have Jesus with them. That is and the sad become part. Agnostic I think Mormonism or atheist. chews you up. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I'm surprised at how many become, I am lucky that it was Jesus who drew me out. So I already had my Jesus, yeah. you know, even if I didn't have it the way I have it now, right. I had something. And so it wasn't church history that chased me off. It was the doctrine. And so, and so I feel really, and then for him, for heaven's sakes, this is all about God to him. So, yeah. well, gosh, we're almost out of time. I have just enjoyed you two so much and your spirit, the love you have, the love story that you've mm -hmm. shared is just so, so <laughs> yeah. special. And what a, what a blessing at the yeah. end of your life or <laughs> yeah. after this, what were you going to say? Well, I said, well, we were part 30 years, so he has to give me 30 years. So honey, you're down to like 23 so, more. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'm yeah. still hanging tough. And he's actually down about 80 pounds or something, I know, isn't he? I know, it's uh, awesome. Yeah. I've got well, to I'm, take your he, inspiration. He was 100 pounds lighter in high school and he was baby faced. I would have never recognized him, yeah. Uh, so. Well, any last minute thoughts or <laughs> comments to, again, uh, friends and family or? Um, I, I would like to just say that um, God won't ever give up on you. No. And he never gives up on us. And sometimes our pride gets in the way or our, our lack of knowledge gets in the way. But hopefully you get the gift of desperation <laughs> and God will be there for you. Yeah. Thank you, Earl. And study that Bible, huh? Yes. Study that Bible because yes. the answers are in there. Well, thank you so much and appreciate your stories. And We'll see you next time on the Exploring Files.